So the three main data types in NetLogo are turtles and patches, agent sets, and lists. You're going to be using these a lot, so let's uh, talk a little bit about them. As you saw, we can create turtles. I can say create turtles one, and this is going to create one turtle right there. If I uh, I can right click on it, I can inspect that turtle zero there, and there it is. It you know when you do that, it pops up this thing. You can also do that from the command line. You can say inspect turtle zero like that and close it and then open it again with a command. There it is. As you can see, each turtle has these properties. Uh, every turtle has a who number. These numbers start at zero. So the first turtle is zero, then one and two and so forth. And then they all have a color and a heading and an X and Y and all these properties. Um, are given to every single turtle. Uh, the patches, and you go back, uh, I'm go move this over here, move over here, I right click anywhere, I can inspect that patch. You can see the patch. It's also like a turtle, except it's got fewer properties. It's only got the PX color and a PY color and a P color, that's the patch color label. And uh, so the patches, uh, the big difference, of course, is the patches cannot move, right? So a patch is stuck that x and y coordinate you cannot change those values you can however change its color and its label and the label color um, so those are the patches if you click settings here you'll see how many patches there are in the world in this case we have a 33 by 33 uh, two-dimensional patch grid and each one is uh, 13 pixels in size they're all always going to be square um, so 13 by 13 in this case so those are the patches, those are the turtles that are built in. Um, you can say stuff like that to refer to a turtle one. If you have more turtles, of course, you can say inspect turtle one if there was such a thing, but I haven't created one, so I'm going to get an error message. Uh, it's going to tell me nobody because turtle one refers to nobody because there is no, no turtle one yet. You can also, another thing you can do is you can create breeds like I, I just did here. I have a breed, agents, agents. So I have an agent breed and a cat breed. You just say breed bracket and then the plural and then the singular of the noun that you want to use. So cats and cat. And once you do that, then you can go back over here. And uh, you can say create uh, cats. Ten. I'm going to create ten cats. Now the cats are going to be just like turtles. So they just got created, they got placed there just like turtles. Um, but uh, I can, what I can then do is ask cats to say go forward 10. And uh, so you see the cats go out, but the turtle remains in the middle. So the turtle didn't go forward, only the cats did. So even though, you know, they're, so they're different objects, they're different classes, you know, if you're used to object oriented programming. Uh, the cats class is different, although you know inherits from turtles, so they're they start out as the same, but you can then ch change it. Uh, the way you would do, say, you wanted to the cats to have a name, you would say you know cats own cats dash own uh, name, and uh, so if you have say oh the cat has a name and maybe an age, so now after you do that, then uh, all the cats will have, uh, I'm going to clear out and make new cats. Uh, I'm create 10 cats. Let's ask him to go forward 10. And then if I inspect them, if I inspect one of them, uh, I should show the, you can see it there. It'll show the name and the age, which by default, every variable gets set to zero. Uh, but then you can change that. So you see now, each one of these guys has two new properties and that's how you add properties to your types uh, and then you know I can of course set those properties so I can ask cats to set their name to be their color why not uh, so now uh, every cat has a name that says color so I can ask cats to show their name and uh, they're gonna show you know the way colors are dealt with in net logo is by number so this is actually uh, the color number for that particular guy so probably not what you want to do but that's how you do it uh which brings us to the ask right so the ask primitive is very 
important. Uh, this is how we get uh, an agent set to do something. So cat, the cat's variable by itself is now defined and it refers to the agent set of all cats. Uh, an agent set is just a set, right? It's just a set of agents and or turtles or cats in this, clay, this case. And the main thing to remember is they're not ordered, right? So you can, when you ask cats to do something, that means every single cat is going to do whatever is here. But uh, it could do it in different order. So if I do this again, ask cats to show their name, you see that first, the first time it did it six, four, three, and the next time five, four, six. So they're going to do it in a random order uh, every time. Uh, and uh, the way it's actually implemented is, like I said, they do it in sequence. So cat six is going to do everything, then four, then three. Um, so there is a, there is an ask concurrent, we can, which uh, simulates a little bit uh, a parallelism. You can read about that, but mostly, you know, just stick to using ask, especially at the beginning. Okay, so that's ask. Uh, now the agent said so. These are all my cats here. Um, you uh, often, you don't want to do, say you wanted to do oh, something with only a, some of the cats, right? So the way you would do that, the way basically you want to filter on the cats, so you want a subset of the cats, so use the word with, the cats with, and then brackets, and here you have a Boolean expression like color equals green. Um, so it tells me that that, when I do that, I say show cats with color equals green, it returns an agent set with three turtles, three cats, uh, all of which have the color green, right? And uh, so the width is very powerful, little. It's a filter uh, that lets you, you know, get a subset of those agents. Uh, you're gonna uh, specify uh, who equals four, so that's going to return just one turtle, because there's only one who has four, or let's say I can specify who is less than four, and that's going to give me four turtles, all the ones that have who numbers less than four. Right, so I can put in, you know, any kind of Boolean function, and within here, you see, I'm using the variables, uh, the properties of the cat, right? So here is, let's go back to the code. Uh, let's do, you know, a standard a square uh, example. So I'm going to do a setup function, create cats. I'm going to create 10 cats. And, and uh, I'm going to set the pen down. Remember, each turtle has a pen that can be up or down when it's down. Then every time they move, they are going to draw. So, and then uh, this is what it's going to do is just go forward, uh, say 10, and then write uh, 90 degrees, and then I'm going to repeat that four times. So, hopefully you see this is going to draw a square. When I go back over here, I can, uh, let me put a little set of buttons. So I don't have to keep typing this. Yeah, set up. Okay, I think I forgot to clear all. Uh, clear all. So clear all or CA. So that's going to clear everything, create those turtles. And then I can ask my cats to do a square. And so each one is going to go and do a square like that. Um, and you see the color of the square of the color of the pen is the color of the agent. That's how it's normally done in NetLogo. Um, so the main thing to note though is, uh, so I said, uh, ask cats to do a square. Now let's see, I wanted to do a little go button here. Here I could say uh, square. Let's see if I try to do something like that, you know, it's gonna give me a little red. Uh, if I click on it, it says you can't use square in observer context because square is turtle only. So this is confusing to people who are new to this. Um, but basically, you know, NetLogo is smart enough to go, when you go, when you have a method like square, uh, NetLogo goes through it and it notices if you're using, are you using properties or are you calling methods that are turtle only? Like only a turtle can go forward, right? 
So if you're doing that, then NetLogo is going to say, okay, the square method can only be used by a turtle. So it means that what that means is the square has to be within an ask. And uh, so that's what you're seeing here. You know, whoops, you're seeing that uh, this error message tells us that uh, the observer is sort of the global context. You see right here, it says observer. So this is the global context. And uh, the global context, I can't just go forward because I don't know who goes forward, right? The global context has uh, all the turtles in it. So it's not in one specific turtle. So that's not going to work. So you can say we're going to call this go. And then we're going to write a go method. So to go is going to ask turtles to do a square. And, right. and when we go back to interface now, we're good. I can set it up. I can hit go and they will draw. It will work just fine. So that's the issue. And what I like to do is, you know, uh, I can say cut methods. So I like to separate my code into, you know, first you define your breeds, then you have your, you know, observer methods. I don't usually do this, but uh, observer methods or your global methods. These are the ones that are called from the interface, uh, from the GUI. And then you have, maybe you have your CAD methods and your agent methods, etc., And just separate them with a little comment like that. Uh, just to keep it organized. Sometimes you will have a method that maybe it's a method that can be used by both cats and agents. Uh, so, you know, whatever. Put it somewhere where it makes sense to you. Uh, but uh, it's, it helps me to separate those. Okay, so uh, those are agent sets. And like I said, the main useful thing is the width, right? So I could ask uh, turtles with uh, color equals green again. Go back here, set it up, and go. And apparently, there's no green turtles. Try again. Go. Go. One. Okay. So only the green turtles. Uh, we'll do it now. So those are very nice. The width is very powerful uh, for doing that. Uh, okay. The last, the last data structure, which is really the only data structure that you have in NetLogo are lists, right? So uh, let's say your cats have a name and an age. And um, well, now let me, um, uh, let me just use a global variable. So the other thing you can do, by the way, is that you can have global variables, just regular standard global variables. And um, I'm going to have a global variable x like that. Once I do that, and can you know I can set x to 10. And uh, if I try to show x, it'll print out 10. So that's just a global variable that's accessible to all the turtles, everybody. Um, and uh, you, you do need those every now and then. And by the way, these, um, well, not these, but if you use, uh, say, a slider, Right, that becomes a global variable. If you add a slider here, and uh, I say num cats, that variable num cats becomes is a global variable now. That I just created, so I, I don't have you don't have to put it in the globals, um, but it's still available. And you can say and show num cats. It's gonna be fifty because that's what this is pointing to. You know, if I change that eighteen. It's going to be 18. So it's a global variable that the user can directly manipulate. Very handy. Um, so uh, back to list. So I'm going to set x to that. If I do that, then x is, that's the empty list. So that's two brackets, like these two together. And it looks like a square, I know. But uh, that's the empty list. And uh, so similarly, you can set a list to, you know, that six. So X is now the list of the numbers one, two, three, and you have you know stuff like first of X will give you the first item, uh, but first of X gives you the tail. So this is you know since NetLogo is a list or at least you know descendant of list, however you want to define that, it's got all the standard list uh, functional programming uh, primitives, right? So you can do all the things that you would 
that do with list like map right so there's a map function and let's go to the documentation on this uh, if you click over here to list right, you see all the list functions you can see there's map there's reduce and filter so those are the three big ones map reduce and filter and then there's remove stuff etc uh, now and one thing to notice is you know the list are um, immutable so you cannot actually change a list if you do something like the remove check out the remove for example remove item from list for a list reports a copy of a list with all instances of item removed so you can never actually change a list all you can do is create a new copy of it that's changed and you'll notice that is true for all the list commands uh, so that's helpful but also keep in mind that you know you have really really long lists every time you do something like this it's actually making a copy of it so it's going to use up a lot more memory it's kind of it's a bit slower if you need if you don't want that you, you should probably use the the tables which are hash table which do not uh, make a copy every time anyway back to list i'm getting a little more advanced there uh so I have a list here you can do, but first, uh, actually what I wanted to do is show you the, let's, let's do the map. So you click link, the list there. You click over to map, uh, where's the map? There. And you see map, reporter, uh, task, and then the list. So for example, you know, if you want to show a map of, key, the first one is going to be your function. So if you just do something like that, that's just going to show you the list. So the question mark is the variable. Basically, this function is going to get applied to every member of X. Right? So X is just the numbers 1 through 6. If I show X, uh, or say 2 times question mark, it's going to multiply everything times 2. See? And if I do you know question mark times question mark, it's going to square everything in the list. Um, so, you know, for people new to functional programming, this requires a little bit uh, thinking a little bit differently. You know, you, you want to think in terms of applying functions to whole lists uh, and getting a list in return. Um, there's the reduce. So many times you just want to reduce something. Uh, you're going to use, uh, if you want to, whoops, do something like that. So the reduce function, um, the reduce function right takes a function as this argument and you see now I have question mark one question mark two because reduce and it requires a function with two arguments and basically it's going to apply this function to the first and second element then whatever that returns is going to apply that's going to be the new first and it's going to apply that to you know that first and then the second which is going to be the third element etc um, so what does it do you know if you if you do that multiply it just multiplies everything. If you do add, it's just going to return you the sum of all the numbers in X. And remember, X was uh, all that. So if you add these numbers together, you're going to get 21. Uh, that's what that does. So it's very useful. You know, you'll see that uh, you'll this will come in handy a lot. And finally, uh, the filter. The filter is uh, similar. So uh, it takes one argument. So on the question mark, and uh, the number, let's say the number is less than four. So say I only want all the numbers in the list X are less than four. That's how we do that, right? So only if X, this, uh, this function is gonna get applied to every number in the list. So those are the three big ones, map, reduce, and filter. Uh, hopefully you're familiar with, if not, you know, you're gonna be using these uh, quite a bit to help clean up your code now the way this fits in with the agents is uh, with the off uh, primitive so uh, if I say give me the color of uh, what do I have cats right so show color of cat like the off word is a special one so uh, what this is going to do is going to return to me a list of all the colors of the cat in this agent set you see and that's how you know you can do stuff so you say okay that's the list of all the colors in the cat uh let's say you know i wanted i don't know the to add all these up for whatever reason uh i could do that so i can uh reduce that with one or two there's also some predicate you know uh you probably want to use that but i'm just showing the 
as an example. Um, so that will work. Uh, like I said, you know, you could also get the same result with just sum, right? Uh, which makes more sense. But you know, if what you wanted to do was more complicated than just adding them, uh, you could do that. So that's how you get. Uh, this is what you'll see a lot. You're gonna get a list, uh, grab a list of some uh, attribute uh, from the set of agents, and then you know do something with that list. Maybe reduce it, or maybe manipulate it in some other way. Uh, notice that this color here, this could be a report method, right? So uh, I got the cat method. I could say to report, and uh, let's say um, I'm going to report the cuteness, uh, which is going to be a random number. Uh, oops, report. So cuteness is actually a method, but if I go over here, you know, I could say, give me the cuteness of the cats. And that works just fine. So it's just gonna call this method on every single cat. It's gonna return a random number. So that's also something you do. we do a lot. Uh, you implement the method because many times what you want is not just a fixed property, it's something a little more complicated that needs to be calculated. So you can do that. It's pretty cool. Uh, so you can map, filter, reduce, and off. And now the final one, if you do want to use a loop, uh, you can do that. There is a for each method. So um, oh, I'll just do it here. So you can say for each, for each, and you give it a list. Um, so let's see, x, x is still that list. So I can say for each. In X, I can say show question mark, and that is going to go through. So the question mark in here is going to be each item in the list in order. Uh, so that's how you would do that if you really need. Sometimes you do need. Many times you need to go through each one uh, and do something. So it's very similar to the map, right? Uh, the map applies this function, but here. Uh, in here, you have to uh, apply sort of, you can't have a complicated a set of statements, right? You have to have a simple statement in here. So here for each X allows you to put between these brackets, you can put a lot of stuff, uh, more complicated logic. Uh, so that's how you go through each one. Now, uh, one final thing is with these, so this is, this are list. Now you can't, all these map and reduce will not work on an agent set. So you have the variable cat, which is all the cat agents. Uh, and you know, I can ask the cat to go forward 10, five, and I can ask him to do a square and do that. Uh, but every time I do this, I, I don't have a control over uh, what order. And they're they're going to do it in random order and I cannot, I have no control over what that order will be. So if you wanted control over the order in which the cats are, you, you would need a list. And uh, the way uh, you would do that is with the sort primitive. You say sort cats, and it would return this list where each element in the list is, in this case, a cat or you know a turtle more generally. So sort, if you give it an agent set, returns a list composed of each uh, agent in that agent set or each turtle in that agent set like this uh, so that's how you would do that uh, the uh, the particular sorting you can you know in this case is by who right uh, and you can look this up here in the right, logo dictionary i think under agent sets right uh, or maybe it's under list no sort and there's this sort by and sort on uh, which are also useful when you want them in uh, in some particular order Right. So this is, again, this comes a lot. You, you're working on your program, you have an agent set, and you all of a sudden decide, oh no, I need to do this in this order, you know, usually because you really need to do something that's gonna affect the next guy, and then the next guy, you need to do it in a specific order. So if you wanna do that, use for for each, you would say, you know, for each, uh, for each, instead of saying X, you would say for each in the sort cats or sort by cats. And then here you would put your code, uh, and then every time here the, the question mark is going to be referred to one of the cats, one of your agents. 
Um, so I can say, I'm going to say show. Um, ask question mark to show his who number. And that's going to print out the zero, you see, in order like that. So for each in the list, turn this agent set into a list. Then this is an agent now, so you're going to ask him to do stuff. Um, and you can ask him to show his who number. So that's the main good introduction to turtles, agent sets, and lists. There's still a lot more that you probably need to know. Again, recommend you go to the dictionary here and uh, just read on all the built-in primitives.